it's, it's really nice to see you all because it's terribly cold outside, but it's nice and warm in here. Maybe that's why you're here. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try to make it as interesting as possible. And if you would have any questions as we're going through anything, just stop me. I'm, I'm used to all kinds of students because I taught for 33 years at four colleges. And some of them were really nice and some of them were less nice. So I'm ready for almost anything. But the work is about trees, yes, but also what we're doing with them and how some of our ideas about how we're going to solve some of our problems related to the climate are potentially uh, alleviated by the trees in their natural life cycle, but also what we do to the trees is not necessarily the most effective use of that organic power. Uh, the pellets are basically former trees that were chipped, ground, run through a sieve so that they oozed out in these little rectangular units. And uh, now you can buy these, you know, at Lowe's, you can buy these at Home Depot for your pellet furnace. You know, so these will go in, but that's not the major production for this to really make money off of it. These are sold in bulk to EU companies, uh, EU countries, uh, Britain, Dax family, that Dax factory is a former uh, fossil fuel producing, electric energy producing uh, uh, factory. And they're buying this shiploads that are produced from southern forests. And the production of southern forests means that they grind them down. So they're killing. And so we're losing that carbon sink. We're losing that ability to replace the, the air that we breathe. We, ex we, 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 we put out. Uh, carbon dioxide, trees take it in and produce oxygen from that and capture the carbon to build their tissue and also regenerate the soil. So there's a, a great deal of power that the tree has that we don't really recognize or think about it. We just think about, oh, is it gonna, is it gonna be a nice addition to the, to the yard or something like that? But actually there's, there's a real reason why we should start thinking about what our environment, what our landscape does. Now, that's a big load and not necessarily what you're gonna pick up from this show as much as I am just fascinated with tree forms and also my experiences walking through the woods. Whether it be a full tree, whether it be a stump, whether it be things that happened as the, as the trees start breaking down. There's a certain magic about these trees that are going back into the soil. And um, as I was telling some other people, the trees that I exploit are the ones that are already dead. My son-in-law has an event center in the Catoctin Mountains in Maryland, and uh, it's, it's, he lets me have anything there. Uh, it's 220 acres, uh, lots of trees. Uh, some of them have had, they've had to destroy because they were, uh, they were diseased, therefore those are chopped, chopped down. And uh, he's, they're, they're replenishing them. But in any type of replenishment, you're talking about decades for that tree to go into from sapling to full grown mature tree, even if it's for decorative purposes. And so the idea of, of reforestry is not a quick process. It's, it's a very long process. Uh, so I, I value that environment that I have access to. And these things are sort of remnants of sort of uh, things that I experienced, whether it be trees, whether it be stumps, whether it be objects that were left from the, the process of, 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 of uh, harvesting. Um, so that sort of introduces this. Uh, they are not accurate. <laughs> They're vaguely accurate in terms of uh, maybe there's a tree trunk and it's sort of round. Um, they aren't to sort of um, convince you that these are real trees any longer. They allude, and that's a very loose way of, of, of using the idea of referencing trees. 
So they, they, there is natural sort of bark that I have reattached to a, f a form that I have made, that I have fabricated, that I have put together. So virtually everything in here is a fabricated, a fallacious tree part, you know? Uh, plywood cores are very predictable and uh, I, can, I, I can handle that very, very well. So uh, they're, they're, they might have a very strong re resemblance to tree pieces, but they aren't. They just kind of suggest it. I think with there's 15 pieces in this show, um, there's probably in the whole series, I've been doing this for the last five years, maybe eight years, there's probably maybe 40, 50, maybe even 100. I, I, I really don't keep accurate uh, accounting to how many I've produced. Um, but I do know that I've been working with tree forms and things that are growing for a while now. So they, they do have this sort of tree reference vaguely. I was part of a solo at uh, the uh, McLean Project for the Arts. And uh, the, I made this piece after that. And what I did use these pieces in an installation with some tall ones, basically about the idea of what we do with harvesting, clear cutting. The whole installation was about clear cutting. And so there were these sort of fabricated tree parts that some of them were as tall as I am. Uh, it was the, well, a little bit taller, like just, just, well, yeah, just over my head. And they sort of set together. And the, instead of pellets, they were, bark shaped hands. I got a lot of tree bark and I cut hands of, of various sizes. My, my grandsons had great little hands and so I sketched them and made them. But it was a way of blaming us, you know, that we're chopping these trees down. And so the idea of the trees, this, this collection, which it was just about this size, um, which is just covered with, with hands. But then the trunks, were emerging from those hands. Uh, these weren't, the, some of these can go on the wall. They're like, this one can also hang, on, that one can hang on the wall. Um, this stands up, that stands up. And uh, so some of them can have dual function. You know, um, I finish them and I think about them and then maybe I'll redo some application for it. Because uh, each installation, it's almost like repertory sculpture. You know, you, you don't, I don't damage them. I just put them into a new context. I, I do design them so that they can hang on the wall in some cases, and in some cases, they can lay on the floor. It makes it a little bit more uh, interesting, you know. You, you can, the curators can pick and choose, and this is what we're going to do, this is what we're not going to do. But it's the idea of how can we deal with these living forms and how we respond to them. Hopefully uh, that meditative process that I use to produce these images will be able to give you some type of thought of how you can respond to these things as sort of sections of trees and what trees are in terms of it's their meaning to you.